what we have here is a situation. Right? We have a lot of information from weather stations all across the world, from satellites, from historical records, from paleo records, and we think that something's wrong. You know, we can we can detect pretty clearly that the temperatures have been warming over the last uh, 100 years, and that the lots of things have been changing in the Arctic and in where plants are growing and things. And we're trying to see why that's going on. We're trying to understand that system. The analogy. Uh, that, that works and is actually really good it, it, it is one uh, like like you going to see a doctor, right? You know, the doctor is going to take a bunch of tests. He's going to take your temperature. He's going to take your blood pressure. He's going to look underneath your tongue. And it's not that those things, you know, shout out, oh, you've got this disease or you've got this. But by putting all of those pieces of information together, you get a sense of how that whole complex system that any individual person's body is, is kind of reacting and what might be pushing it in various directions. You know, do you have an infection? Do you have, do you have a broken arm? Right? I mean, like, there are things that you can look at. They, they each have different fingerprints. They each have um, different patterns of change associated with them that give you a clue to why things are changing. And, and that's exactly the same as what we're doing on Earth. Right? We're looking for the patterns of change. We're looking for the fingerprints that are associated with uh, changes because of the sun, uh, changes because of big volcanic eruptions, changes because of greenhouse gases, changes because of deforestation. Right? Each of those things has a distinct fingerprint, which allows us to make a diagnosis. Right? You know, if we go around and we see the same fingerprint in all of these different archives, we can say, aha, they've done it. And when we've done that for the 20th century, when we've done that for the last 30, 40 years and the trends that we've seen, the, uh, the fingerprints all line up with, with carbon dioxide and the other greenhouse gases. You know, and, then, and we, can see, we can also see um, fingerprints from volcanoes, we can see fingerprints from the sun, but they're relatively small and they're not what's causing uh, the trends. So you have to look uh, at the system and it's complex and there might be more than one thing going on at the same time. And so attributing exactly, you know, you know, the most serious thing that's going on, right, that takes uh, a little bit of time, it takes a little bit of skill, we need to be able to pull out these different fingerprints, uh, but we can. Uh, we can do it for, uh, for, for, for people uh, in hospital, and we can do it for planets. Now, we have a good diagnosis for what's happened uh, to the system over the last you know, 50 to 100 years, and we have a prognosis of how that's going to go in the future because the same things that are pushing the trends up until now, they're just getting stronger, right? It's, they're not going away, right? You know, carbon dioxide is not going down. We're not stopping up the burning of coal. We're not stopping the burning of oil. And so what we can predict is that these things are going to get worse. Okay, once you've got a prognosis, you've got to think about a treatment. It's very similar to what people uh, have to do when they're told that they have high cholesterol. Right? You know, oh, well, you know, this is a long-term thing, you know, you want to get it down. If you, the more that it happens, the more problems you're going to see in the future, right? In a statistical sense, you don't know for certain, right, that it's going to lead to diabetes or heart attacks or anything like that. But statistically, you know, these things are associated with higher risks. It's exactly the same issue that we have today with, with the planet. You go forward and you say, okay, well, how can you mitigate those risks? If you're, if you're overweight, you know, you say, okay, well, I'm going to start to count my calories. Uh, and when you're putting huge amounts of carbon dioxide emissions into the system, you can start to think about ways to reduce those carbon dioxide emissions because they're the cholesterol of the climate system. Basically, the more they build up, the more risks you're going to have in the future. There are thresholds in the system that, that we can see every time there's a storm surge and it fills a tunnel. Right? That was a threshold that was crossed. If it had been 12 feet, it wouldn't have filled the tunnel. 14 feet, it fills the tunnel. Right? There was a threshold that was crossed. And there are lots of those. There are, there are thresholds in ecosystems. There are thresholds in the ice sheets in, uh, in the Arctic uh, and in Antarctica. Uh, there are thresholds in our ability to grow food or to, uh, or to provide enough water for the cities in the American Southwest. Knowing when those are going to come is exactly like you know, knowing when somebody's going to die of a heart attack. You don't know, right? It's basically unpredictable. But you do know that statistically these thresholds will be crossed. We're in the position, just, just like doctors, of, of telling people, look, 
you don't have to do anything you don't want to do, but you carry on down this path, this is your odds of, of dying prematurely. If you try and get off that path, then you know the odds are you're going to have a better outcome. But we're not just talking about one person, right? We're talking about everybody. We're talking about the whole planet. And you know what? Good planets are hard to find. <laughs>